Hello and welcome to Reddit Tell All. Today's story is from r slash true off my chest. There is two very small updates to this story, so make sure you stick around for them. I hope you enjoy it and I would love to hear all your feedback and comments below and let's just get straight on with the story. I forced my wife to go to a party and now my marriage is ruined. Me and my wife, Kay, have been married for four years now. We had an arranged marriage, but so far we have had a good marriage and a strong bond. I love her and would do anything for her in the blink of an eye. Before we got married, we decided that we will have our own individual space and we don't have to tell each other everything unless we feel the other person should definitely know. The arrangement went well for years. I didn't have much to hide or to tell, but she did. When I met Kay for the first time, she was a very conservative person and a bit too devoted to religion. She told me that she wasn't a good person in the past, but since then she has tried to be a good person living a moral life. She told me some details about her past and how she was a wild girl in college and had several relationships and partners. Even after we got married, she would tell me some details about her past, but I never pressed to get details. She always refers to her college self in the third person, and whenever she talks about her past, she always says that her college self is a horrible person. Since then, she has been more devoted to religion and is quite different from her previous self. I have seen some pictures and videos and Kay is nothing like that person today. Kay doesn't have a lot of friends and mostly spends her time praying or with other religious stuff. I am the only person she shares her thoughts with. A few months ago, out of the blue, she got a call from her best friend from college, R. I saw Kay light up after talking to R. Kay felt so happy after reconnecting with R and R invited her to a party at her place. R also called up their other friends from college. Kay was conflicted about going to the party. I convinced her to go saying the worst that could happen is that she has a boring night. Kay asked me to come along with her. Even during the drive, I was thinking about getting some embarrassing and funny stories about my wife from her friends. When we reached R's place, I realized why Kay was conflicted. Kay was dressed very conservatively, light makeup and very little jewelry. Her friends from college were the exact opposite. They were dressed like tweens, going out to party all night. The night started normally about the girls sharing funny tales, but the stories quickly became raunchy and then horrifying. I found out Kate and R were the leaders of a group of mean girls. They slept around, abused alcohol and drugs, and on occasions ruined people's lives. Kay stepped away to go to the bathroom when the group turned to me and told me stories about my wife. R talked about Kay sleeping with most of the professors at their college, which I did know about, but wasn't aware the number was that high. R purposely told me about how Kay and R systematically gaslit a woman into believing that she is a lesbian and ruined her marriage because her husband had rejected Kay's advances. And all the girls found this incident to be funny. I wanted to leave, but I couldn't find Kay. I went to the bathroom to look for her and found her curled up in a corner crying. I picked her up and left immediately. The entire drive back, Kay was sobbing and kept repeating, I am sorry. 
She was inconsolable for days and then she threw herself into religion hard. She started praying for six to eight hours every day. Her daily prayers and rituals usually took two hours. I thought that giving her space would help her heal and she would talk to me whenever she is ready. We haven't talked much since then. She still cuddles up in bed but doesn't say anything. Last week she told me that she has decided to be celibate for the rest of her life to repent for her former sins. She asked for my support and apologized for springing it on me. She has told me to leave her if I can't live a celibate life with her. I have tried talking to her about trying therapy, but she is adamant on her plan. I ruined my near perfect life by forcing her to go to that party. Update one. Last night when we got into bed, I told her I love you and I will wait for you to be ready for me. At the time, I wasn't even sure what I meant. I just had to talk to her. Her eyes swelled up with tears. I can tell she wanted to wail and scream, but was holding back. She grabbed me and didn't want to let go. She whispered, I love you. And we held each other for the rest of the night. In the morning, I asked if she would just talk to a therapist. I assured her I would try to support her decision either way. She agreed and kissed me. We hadn't kissed in almost two months. I thought my wife was back, but a few minutes later, she texted me from the kitchen. My celibacy doesn't have to mean yours. You are free to leave me. If you want to stay, I will not interfere with your physical needs. It killed me reading that text. We haven't said a word to each other since then. Update 2. Kay started therapy thanks to the efforts of some members of her religious group. She will need a lot of time and I don't know if I will ever get my wife back. Everyone keeps telling me that she will get better soon but I am not sure if she would still be my wife when she does. Even if she does come back, I have heard things about her past that makes it very hard for us to just continue our relationship. Some details make me feel that Kay doesn't deserve happiness. For now, I will support her to help with her recovery, but I am not sure what happens after. Wow, does anyone else feel a little shocked after reading all of that? Someone said in one of the comments from the original story that it sounds like his wife is having a nervous breakdown and I would say I agree completely. It sounds like she is taking this so hard and her friends why would they openly talk about her sleeping with all those people and professors when she wasn't in the room? I know that some couples don't necessarily like to talk about ex-partners or anything kind of like sexual that happened prior to them being in a relationship. So the fact that they just openly talked about it while Kay was not in the room just shows exactly what they are like. They do not care. Or to them, it's so normal that they don't see anything wrong with it. I'm not a religious person. I'm not anti-religion either. So if she wants to throw herself into religion, if that makes her a better person, then I'm all for that. But... I think this woman is taking it to the extremes. She is definitely fighting battles 
with herself and definitely needs therapy and I would say that I know a lot of churches have church therapists and stuff but I would say she needs to speak to a therapist away from the church she's so deep in her religion that she just needs a little bit of a divide away from that just so she can get someone a bit unbiased as he said he doesn't want to tell the therapist everything about her past because of it being religious so that's another reason why she should be trying to speak to a therapist that's nothing to do with the church I do believe that some people can change if they really want to and I think in this instance she done something wrong and she feels terrible for it and she is a completely different person even he said it so I really really hope that they don't divorce over this and he can get through it as well it sounds like maybe he needs to go for therapy as well yeah wow I just didn't know where this story was going I hadn't read the story prior to reading it on the video for you guys so I was pretty shocked and I'm shocked that he said that he doesn't know whether he can get past it but let me know in the comments below what you think about this story and I would love to hear your opinions on this don't forget if you do like the video give it a like subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you very soon